Welcome back, everyone, to Nanolids of Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic. And we will have another replay request match. Patrician versus Newbie Lud. This will be the last match I do on zero on 1.6.7.3. After this match, un, it'll be the nerfed Cyclops is going forward. Or should be, at least. I don't think I have any other requests that... Unless people request earlier matches, but I don't know. I kind of don't want to take requests of anything before 1.9.6.1690. I don't really want to do any more 1673 requests. And the next match, or there is one more match after this, that will be 1690. So, just stay tuned for- well, if you really, really, really want that, that'll be after this one. But this is the last 1673 match. Let's go! Nubula going for the- well, the Heavy Tank Factory, speak of the devil, there it is. And Clogibot Factory is Patrician's choice. Now, Taigo is a map that works reasonably well for Clogibots. I've played around with it myself, but I do think, apart from Glaive's, Clogibots- I don't know, they have some opportunities because the hills work reasonably well for them. It's the only real reason I'd say that they actually have a chance is that vehicles can't go on the hills. Cloaky bots can, so you could have stuff built up in the hills. You could have Ronin and Reavers attack from the hills. It requires a bit more effort, but it is doable. However, yeah, Glaives, because of their speed, that's the huge thing. That is the main reason why. I, I would say the main reason why Cloaky has a chance here is early game, they do really well with the Glaives. Mid to late game, you have to be really conscientious about how you're approaching your opponent if you're using Reavers and Ronin well, and Knights. But you also have straightforward paths that vehicles don't. And ways to flank them that vehicles can't easily deal with, but honestly not that many. Like, again, if you look at the train map here, the red is pathable, but there's not a whole lot, say, in this hill here. The center area, okay, there's a bit there, but not much. Overall, I don't know, I, I'm, I question the use of Cloaky. But I'd like to see it used well, and I have used it well myself. But I feel like above this ranking, and like this is about roughly platinum or so. Yeah, above that, no, I, I don't think Cloaky would really work without being completely stuffed. Anyway, well, see what happens here. Kodachi not getting attacked, Patricia not even going for it. Instead, trying to avoid it. Kind of interesting because I mean, the Kodachi did its shot. It could be stopped effectively, but no, it's going in. It will be able to take out. Probably the Conjurer. Definitely take out a couple of Metal Extractors. There is a Lotus here trying to stop it. But, you know, a bit of hit and run. Try to... Ooh. Try to hit the Metal Extractor. Hits the Solar Collector instead. The Metal Extractor might still burn to death in the meantime. I don't think it will. And the Solar Collector definitely won't. Or... Oh! No, it did work! Metal Extractor does go down. Successful harassment from Nubula. Patrician going for a bit of counter-harassment. And there is a lot more room. I mean, there's a Lotus being built up immediately, and the Weaver, of course, does have a gun. But the main re the main way this is going to be stopped is the Kodachi right here. That's really the only option, because otherwise, there's not much Nubula has in terms of static defense. And that's fine, because between the Blitz, the Kodachi, the Commander, those Glaives don't have a whole lot of room to get around. They might have small windows to get in and take out a Metal Extractor or two, but they're not going to be able to kill much. So yeah, the Blitz coming in here, yeah, wisely being avoided. Kodachi, I could see a group of Glaives being able to deal with. You know, it fires off its fire shot. The Glaives scatter to avoid it and then regroup around the Kodachi as it's reloading and kill it. Totally viable. I kind of wish that Nubula had done that. Because Patrician still has that Kodachi somewhere in the map, I think. Or... Nope, apparently not. Apparently I don't see it anymore. And again, the commander also acting as a bit of static defense, so unfortunately the Glaive is not able to do much. And they will run into this picket and die. So, yeah. Valiant effort, but unfortunately not really what was needed to be done. Ah, there it is. Yeah, that's the other Kodachi. So yeah, that's the thing. And then the Kodachi around here that... Wait, no, this Kodachi died. This is the Kodachi that attacked and didn't get killed, and really should have gotten killed. Like, the Glaives could have gone back and killed it and not died. So, that's the thing to bear in mind, just for future. At this point, however, I don't really know what Patrician has planned. They don't have a whole lot of economy built up, so they don't have a whole lot they can actually do. And is that... Is that actually on the... Sp no, it's not on the spot. You can still build a Metal Extractor there. Yeah, okay. Not sure why they chose to build a Lotus right that close to the Metal Extractor. But the point is they aren't building metal extractors. That doesn't really matter what defense they try to use. The point is they don't have the things to defend. They don't have the economy to work with. Nubula, on the other hand, has rapidly expanded along their entire section of the map. While 
Patrician just hasn't. They've had to deal with the Kodachis, and I mean, they're definitely managing to get rid of them eventually, but that's... That Kodachi has basically left them with half the economy they should have. So Patrician is so far in the back foot, I'm not really sure what they could do right now, other than... I, I mean... Go for some kind of ballsy harassment strategy, which might work, but honestly, there's so much in the way of defenses for Nebula. The only other thing I could think of would be going like heavy Reaver Ronin, just slowly creeping out and embracing the fact that they're the slow factory. They can't move as quickly, but that's also seeding territory, so I don't know. Tough call. Well, the one thing I would like to see them do, at least with the Glaives, apart from not running into a ball of napalm on the ground is to try to find if there's stuff in the mid middle of the map because they're not going to get a nubula's base that's not happening this base is too well defended for the army they have but they could at least stop nubula from expanding across the map if they're gonna if they were to play a slower strategy with heavier units that allowed them to defend their own base and build up then they want to make sure at least with a small set of roving groups of roving glaives like two or three groups of glaives just go around the map make sure there isn't anything being built up while you're building up your own base Make sure that Nebula isn't getting the massive economy that, honestly, they need, because they're playing tanks. And that their economy doesn't outpace yours. And if it starts trying to, then you can actually stop it. You can get rid of the Weavers. Because, I mean, the Weavers don't deal that much damage. It's, you know, 45 DPS. They get rid of one Glaive every five seconds. So, well, a little over five seconds. Or sorry, a little under five seconds. A little over four seconds. So, the Glaives can take out it quickly. I mean, each of them is dealing, like, 150 damage per second. 120 damage per second. So, yeah, do the maths on that. It takes three or four glaives about five seconds to get rid of a welder. One of those glaives will die in the process. Seems fine to me. Like, for the cost... One glaive to get rid of a very tough, very effective build power worker that's going to be expanding, as they are right now? I mean, that's that's the thing to do. But Nebula is countering that possible strategy of the roving harassment by throwing the ogre around, the Kodashis around. But even then, it's actually not working super well. The ogre is a slower unit, and Ronin would work well against it, which are being built right now. So Patrician definitely has the right idea. Except for the expansion. They are not expanding. That's the one thing they need to do more of. Get another... Get two or three more Conjurers and just send them expanding. Get expanding over to the north side. Get expanding over to the south here. I just don't worry about defense. I know I said earlier, defend and build up, but at, the, at this point I'm thinking, no, there's no point. Nubula is so focused on the north side of the map, it's actually almost more worth it just to aggressively expand, use that money to build up an army, and then work from there. Especially seeing as this Glaive army is going to die to the Ogre right about now. Yeah, there it goes. So, that's all they got. Like, build up the expansions you need. At the very least, you get more money and you don't fall behind from Nubula. Because the harassment strategy is not working. There's too much in the way. There's too many Ogres. That just, it's been prepared for. But rapid expansion across the map is not being prepared for. Nubula is not going for harassment of their own. They seem to be assuming correctly at this point that Patrician is not going to be leaving their own corner, which, if Patrician were to leave their own corner, would break that assumption and thus give them a massive amount of money that Nubula doesn't realize they have. I mean, these glaives going for harassment, they're going to die to the Stardusts. A bit of a shame, too, because if they went south, they'd actually be able to... They'd get rid of the commander. There's nothing that... Their commander doesn't have anything. And they might do so. Four glaives wouldn't be enough. Like, with, with perfect micro, it would, but I don't see that happening. No offense to Patrician, it's just they did mention they were tired, and they are playing like it. So I don't think they'd be able to micro around the commander well enough to be able to avoid it. Especially with the welder right there. Like, that welder completely turns it around. I mean, you know, good, good effort trying to get in there, but no, Nebula's commander is going to survive that. Although, the metal extractors won't. So smart play from Patrician there, at the very least, getting rid of some of the metal extractors, putting them reasonably close in terms of overall economic footing. They're still behind. They're still focusing more on overdrive than they are on building more metal extractors, which, again, that is the key thing. They need to stop being timid and build some metal extractors, or needed to have been. It's a couple minutes late for that now, but, yeah, just go in. Oh, thanks, FFC. So three apparently is the minimum number of glaives needed to kill a welder. I would still go with four just in case something else comes in, or if there's two or three welders, because at that point... You can get rid of all of them effectively. But, yeah, if you know there's only one welder, three is what you gotta do. Thank you, FFC. That makes sense. I imagine you'd only have one glaive at the end of that, though. Speaking of having only one glaive at the end, though, this Kodachi's coming in, and all the glaives were clumped up. I mean, Patrician is line-moving, as they should be, but 
again, it's just the napalm is difficult to micro around, and it is not being microed around. So those glaives only last so long. The Ronin walk into the flames as well, which they can't recover from automatically like glaives do. However, Patrician still has a reasonably well-built army for this. I mean, mostly it's just that Nubla's army is kind of spread out, and I mean, as the Blitzes die, that's 300 metal each. At the cost of two or three glaives each, this is actually very efficient. I mean, Patrician, they're, they're behind a bit in attrition right now, but not by much. And every single one of these that die, every single one of these Blitzes that die is hugely valuable. So, honestly, Patrician's actually not doing too badly, but they are still behind economically. Nubula is still taking over the entire map. It's only a matter of time. Patrician is fighting a losing battle right now. They do not have the money to turn this around. They're close-ish, but they don't have the money right now. And they're doing a reasonably good job with attrition, but still it's not quite enough. Like, they're doing a reasonably good job for a while, and then an ogre comes in and starts destroying all their glaives. Or the Kodachi comes in and everything walks into the flames. So, it's almost there. It's so close, but it's also just not enough money. But there is a reclaim! Just, seriously, where are... How many... There are two. There are exactly, on the map, entirely, two conjurers. There should be five or six. By now, there should be at least five or six going around the map, expanding, harassing... Not harassing. Expanding, reclaiming, possibly repairing at this point, because they kind of need it. But yeah, something. Anyway, here we have four glaives coming in here, getting rid of the welder, and... Yeah, again. Two of them died, mostly because the glaives were not all attacking at once. That was effectively three glaives, because they kept blocking each other's line of fire. Still, though, that was effective. That's the thing. you got to get rid of the welders. I always say, if the first thing you go for is the builders, because then they can't easily rebuild stuff. Which is exactly what Nubula can't do over to the northwest. Unfortunately, there are no conjurers here. This is this is 11 metal per second. This set of metal extractors, 11 metal per second that two or three conjurers could very rapidly build up and isn't being attacked right now. But it's not being taken. Again, this is one thing I got. I keep harping on and that I gotta just say as the lesson for this match is don't be afraid of expanding. Never be afraid of expanding. If you have opportunities to expand of any kind, just go for it. If you want to put defenses on it, do so. But you need the money. You always need the money. And Patrician, I mean, they're, like I said, their attrition for Patrician is still doing well. Like, they're only like 600, 800 behind pretty consistently, despite the fact that they're behind in terms of actual money. I can imagine what it was like, would be like if they had any conjurers left, for one thing, because that was both of them. But also if they had the metal extractors. Like, if they had enough money to actually be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of army production, they'd be doing really well right now. But unfortunately, they don't. And it's entirely because they were not expanding. I mean, now this north side is a little bit contested, but this is northwest section. That's never been looked at. Nubula has no idea what's there. I mean, there's nothing there, but Nubula's not been there. So, they don't know. But it's far away from the base, and I guess Patrician's just thinking, well, I can't go and defend it. And the thing is, you don't have to. You're playing Cloaky for one thing, so your Conjurers are cloaked. They can literally just run to the hills and hide. And the tanks cannot get them, and don't know they're there because they are cloaked. Uh, that's one of the key things Cloaky has, is that their workers can cloak. When they're not in combat, they hide. If they're in a tough forward situation where they're trying to expand, they can stay alive. Although, nice defense here. And actually, ooh. That's very nice. Two Minotaurs in the middle of the... Or a Minotaur in the middle of the base, along with a couple Knights. That is... That's good. That's really good. Unfortunately, there's nothing being built up to actually take advantage of that fact. But, there's a lot of Reclaim available there. And a lot of power that can be used to use with the Reclaim. I don't know where Patrician's getting that from, but... Seriously, where are they getting that from? Not that many solar plants, do they? 42 on solar plants. I don't have a Geothermal. Why do they have 76 energy? Is that a fusion plant I'm not seeing? Because I... No, I don't see anything that would should give them that much energy. Regardless, they have plenty of energy. However they manage to grab onto it. I... Okay, I don't know why I can't see what's going on for their energy source. No ge... I would expect a geothermal plant or a fusion plant, but nope. At any rate, though, they've just lost all their storage. They've just lost some of their energy production. And more importantly, they're losing all the stuff over to the north side of the map. And that's... That's the thing. They just didn't have the money. They had decent micro. The matchup actually didn't work out too badly. I thought, oh, Cloaky would have a terrible time. But, no. That's actually fine. It was, the matchup wasn't a problem. It was just, 
building up the arm, uh, building up the economy, forgetting that conjurers can cloak and thus can easily go into dangerous forward situations. And if anything comes up, they can just get out of there and they have no threat. Because again, it doesn't matter if your metal extractors are destroyed, as long as they've been up for about half a minute. It matters if the workers building them are destroyed. Because if the workers building them aren't destroyed, those workers can go back and rebuild once the threat has passed. But if the workers are destroyed, then you have to spend another minute or minute and a half to build a worker or at least get a new one there and then build stuff again. So it takes a lot longer to rebuild. Which is why I always say, go for the workers. And if you can get your workers out of there, which Cloakie is amazingly good at, then do so. So yeah, that that could have very easily been Patrician's game. Their, their attrition, despite their constant, much smaller... Like their, their army was half the side of Nubilas the entire time, or half the cost of Nubilas the entire time. And their attrition was always reasonably close. So, again, if they had an equal economy to Nubula, they probably would have taken it. That's, to me, the only thing is... Don't be timid about building metal extractors. Build all the metal extractors. If they get destroyed, rebuild them. It's no big deal. Metal's cheap. Energy's not, and Patrician had plenty of that too. And the reclaim was there, but that was being taken. Like, that... That wasn't a huge deal. Or rather, it would have been taken probably if the game had lasted any longer. But again, Nubula had too many forces. But yeah, that matchup, when you consider the fact that Cloakie can build up so much faster than tanks, it's not an uneven matchup, honestly. On a map like this, it's actually, looking at the way it was played out now, I'd say it's not 5-5, five, five, but probably 6-4. Possibly 6-4 in favor of Cloakie. At this skill level, 6-4 in favor of Cloakie. At a higher level, probably 6-4 in favor of tanks. Now you have people who are much better at building up their economy. New Blue is quite good at that, but, I mean, like, top-level players would have had pretty much the entire half of the map taken by the five-minute mark. So, yeah, at that point, tanks become a lot more powerful. But even then, Cloakie would still have a lot of options. At least in terms of building up sneakily. But anyway, that was that. So the next match, and last one for tonight, is going to be a match that FFC requested, actually. They're already watching the stream, so that's cool. FFC and Thomas versus Leninator and Sparkles on Ravaged. So, that'll be up in a couple minutes. Now that we are actually properly playing 0k and not Battle Right, which I... Yeah, again, sorry about that. Oh, for crying out I forgot to turn it... Ah, oh, whatever. <sighs> this is Otago. For the for those of you who are wondering, should have said that it was... On Otago, not on Gekawile. Sorry about that. I don't know why I keep bringing up to that. Anyway, back in a sec with a 2v2 on Ravaged. <laughs> 